Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Ching Wang, coming from the University of Queensland. Today, I'm here to present a novel model for spatial items recommendation in location-based social networks, which is also donated as the GeoSarge. Uh, first, I will give a brief introduction to related concepts, challenges, and related works. The location-based social networks are social networks in which the GPS features of the mobile devices are used to locate the users and allow users to share uh, the location and other kind of information. Here, a special item refers to a geographical point in location-based social networks, and, but with specific functions such as a hotel, restaurant, museum, and so on. So here, the problem becomes this. If we are given a target user and a querying location, we try to recommend a list of special items that the target user would be interested in as the querying location based on the information in the location-based social networks. If the distance between the user's home location and the query location is larger than the threshold, we call this kind of, informa uh, with this kind of recommendation as the out-of-town recommendation. Otherwise, it's a hometown recommendation. <clears throat> the first two identified the challenges in this problem is the sparsity problem and the travel locality problem. Uh, let's take a look at the two challenges from the data level. Here is the user spatial item matrix. Uh, as there are billions of POIs around the world, but a user just visits around uh, 100 spatial items. So this matrix is already uh, very sparse. And according to a survey in ICDE 2012, as most of the uh, spatial items visited by a user uh, is allocated in their home cities uh, due to the locality of user travel. So, for example, there are two groups of users in this matrix. One group of users here, they are living in New York City, and the other group of users here, they are living in LA. According to the travel locality, most of the activities for this group of users are in New York City. Uh, when this group of users travel to LA, we try to recommend the special items here to this group of users, which means that we try to make use of this, ma this small matrix to make recommendations. However, due to the travel locality, uh, this a uh, small matrix is even sparser. The third challenge is the, uh, the user's interest may drift across different regions. We study a specific group of users on Foursquare data and uh, uh, pick up the top POI types for the same group of users when they travel in uh, to different cities. We can see that obviously the top POI types for the same group of users in different cities are, obvious, uh, are very different. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at the uh, existing methods. Sorry. And we can see that uh, this is a graph representation for the travel locality problem. Uh, according to the travel locality, uh, there is a gap between both the users and the special items uh, in these two cities. Uh, if one user in this city travels to LA and we try to recommend the special items here to this user, in other words, we try to link uh, the special items on one side with the users in the other side. Obviously, the traditional uh, graph-based and collaborative filtering method would fail in this scenario. Another very popular method is uh, called as category-based KN methods. And this method can alleviate the travel locality problem by transferring the user's personal interests 
to the target region or maybe a new city by the medium of the category information and uh, then make recommendations to this user according to the opinions of the local user uh, in the target region who also share the similar interests with the target user. However, the drawback of this method is that it cannot find the drifted interests in the target region. Uh, for example, uh, we have a target user and according to the category information of the special item she has visited, we can find that this user uh, likes shopping or food. Now she travels to Las Vegas and uh, maybe she wants to visit a casino. But according to the CKN method, it, it will still find some uh, local users in Las Vegas who also like shopping and food. According to their opinion, CKN will still recommend such, uh, such as uh, some restaurant shopping center to this target user. So this part of interest is, is discarded in this method. So uh, in order to deal with the three challenges, we propose GeoSarge. The first main idea is very uh, similar to the CKN. We try to identify the user's personal interests uh, by the medium of the content information. And then we can alleviate the uh, travel locality problem by transferring the user's personal interest to the target region. And the second main idea is that we try to discover the uh, cross opinion in each region to deal with the interest drift problem. For example, if a user travel to Las Vegas, we can make recommendation according to other tourists in Las Vegas. And the third main idea is we uh, combine the two, uh, two kind of interests into a unified model and make recommendations to the user based on the two uh, variables. <clears throat> From this graph, uh, obviously, uh, the user in this side can be linked together, uh, linked with the special item on the other side by the medium of the content information. Uh, in this way, we can alleviate the sparsity problem and the travel locality problem in some extent. <coughs> uh, the second one, we try to discover the cross opinion and to deal with the interest drift across regions. Uh, first, uh, we need to identify uh, whether the user is a tourist or local as the target region. And then we recommend the user's special items according to the opinion of the user who also have shared the same identification with the user. For example, for a target user in Beijing, and uh, we can if the user is a tourist in Beijing, we can make a recommendation based on the opinion of other tourists in Beijing. Otherwise, if he is a local, we can make a recommendation based on the opinion of other locals in Beijing. <clears throat> then how can we combine the user's interest and the cross opinion? According to the traditional work, we can introduce a switching indicator to combine the two variables. However, we find that uh, when the data is sparse, the inference of a switching indicator for each user is both expensive and inaccurate. And inspired by the sparse additive generative model, we avoid the inference of the um, switching indicator for each user by adding the impact of the two variables in an exponential space. <clears throat> when we try to infer the cross opinion for each region, we run into another spicy problem. Uh, when there are a few uh, check-ins in a region, and the inference of the cross opinion may be inaccurate for this region. For example, this region is very small and there is very few uh, check in so the inference of the cross opinion can be inaccurate. To alleviate this problem, uh, we propose a spatial pyramid. 
A spatial pyramid is constructed by partitioning the whole area into grids of uh, wearing sizes uh, uh, at different hierarchies. And then we represent each region with a path to the root. And uh, the cross opinion is inferred by adding all the opinions of its ancestors all the opinions of its ancestors at each level. In this way, we can alleviate the sparsity problem. For example, if there are very few check-ins in this region, we can still borrow the opinions from its ancestors to infer the cause of opinion. <clears throat> the spiritual pyramid can also support, uh, the, the, the support to change the granularity very conveniently. For example, this is the spiritual pyramid with four levels, and all the four levels are already trained. Uh, the current granularity for the target user is on level three, and the user can change the granularities by zooming in or zooming out on the Google map. Uh, so our model can support the change, this changing by switching the granularities to level three, to level two, or level four without any retraining. So in summary, the in input of GeoSearch is a set of user's activity, which include the user ID, the special item ID, the location, the content information, and an indicate to indicate whether the user is a, a tourist or local at uh, this location. And the problem becomes as uh, we try to recommend the top case special items around this location. That's the user may be interested in. <clears throat> this is the graph representation of the uh, GeoSage model. And uh, we, uh, we treat each user as a document and uh, each activity with both the spatial item and the content information as a word. Uh, the generative process can be for uh, we first draw a latent topic of latent topic according to both the user's personal, uh, personal interest and the cross opinion. Here is the background uh, model. This background model, this three background model is try to uh, make this model, this learned model more discriminative because this background model can assign high probabilities to some non-discriminative uh, discriminative terms. And then we can draw the content words and the spatial items uh, according to the topic's distribution. <clears throat> Based on this model, we can learn all the uh, related parameters in this, uh, in this model. How can we learn the parameters in this model? Our objective function is the probability of the content information and the spatial items if we are given all the parameters. However, it's very difficult to maximize directly. That's why we introduced the latent topic Z. And we adopt the GPCM algorithm to uh, uh, infer the parameters. In the each step, we sample the topic according to the GIF sampling method. And in the M step, we try to optimize all the parameters um, according to the gradient distance learning methods. Once we have learned all the parameters in this model, for each spatial item, we can compute a, uh, ranking, a ranking score for each uh, spatial item. And then we pick up the top key spatial item with highest score and recommend the uh, top key spatial items to the users. <clears throat> the following is the evaluation part. Uh, we use two publicly available uh, real life data set uh, to evaluate the performance of GeoSearch, which is Foursquare and, Geo, uh, and uh, Twitter. There are two types of comparative approaches in our evaluation. And the first type is the other state-of-the-art spatial items recommendation methods. And the second type is the variant versions of GeoSearch. 
this type of evaluation is try to evaluate the uh, recommendation performance of our proposed model. And this type of evaluation is try to evaluate uh, the uh, impact of different factors in this model, uh, for, such as the uh, cross opinion and the spatial pyramid. <clears throat> We use the recall at key as our metric, which is also a metric for the precision. Uh, for one test case, if the ground truth item is in the top key recommendation list, we call this one hit. So the hit at key is the number of hits, and the D test is the number of total test cases. We can see that uh, the recall at key increase when the key becomes larger. <clears throat> This is the result compared with the other state-of-art uh, methods, and from this graph, we can see that such significantly outperforms the other state-of-art methods. And the, uh, more details about the evaluation results, you can refer to the paper. And this graph is the uh, result compared with the other uh, variant versions of GeoSarge. And from this graph, we can see that all the factors we have considered in GeoSarge has a positive influence on our final recommendation, uh, effect, uh, recommendation performance. So in summary, we uh, design a novel model for spatial item recommendation motivated by the three challenges. And then we refine the cross preference at a region by exploring the geographical correlation with the spatial pyramid. At last, we conduct uh, uh, extensive experiments to evaluate both the performance of the uh, model and the impact of different factors. How is that so? Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, one question. In the, the spatial pe pyramid, how do you define in which level you're going to apply the algorithm? Is it a hard rule or is it a combination of uh, the check-ins at different levels? Uh, you mean the spatial pyramid? Uh, yeah, so you said that if you have to meet two little check-ins at a small scale, then you go for a larger scale. But is that a hard rule or is it kind of a linear combination of the different scales or is part of the probabilistic model? This one, right? Yes. Uh, so what your question is? Uh, so you said that if you don't have enough check-ins at one level, then you go for the parent level? Yes, uh, for each region, this is the, this is the, for the, the region, this is the bottom. Okay. Uh, the question is whether you switch between one level and another based on hard rules, or you make a combination yes. of all of them, or is part of the probabilistic model? Or how? how to switch, right? Yes. The switch is just so we can switch the bottom line of the whole model from one level to another level. Because uh, after one, uh, for example, uh, if uh, the initial granularity of this model is at level, level four, so all the parameters in level one, level two, and level two, and level three are all changed. If a user, uh, a user changes the target region from uh, into a much larger region, and we can, we can uh, switch the bottom level from level four to level three. Okay, the user is the one that defines which level region. I mean, the user behavior is the one that defines the region that yes. you are going to consider. Okay. Yes. 